Now, another good question about the global status report on road safety published by the WHO at the end of last year. The status report showed promising reductions in deaths globally, which is consistent with this research, of course, that we're talking about today. But it also highlighted two key challenges. And I'm going to give this question to Susanna and also to Dave. Is, or the increase in trauma in Africa. And the second one is a rapidly growing um, urban population. That would be for Dave. So what role do safer roads have to play in these two issues? Susanna, would you like to go first? Sure. Thank you, Natalie. Of course, roads play a, a crucial role for the simple reason that a lot of the population in Africa, if I'm not mistaken, 80% of people are still walking in, in Africa. And unfortunately, the design standards have been applied as standards from the 70s and 80s, which have not been updated for a while. And, and these are standards that we're focusing mainly on motor vehicles. So fundamental to make sure that infrastructure um, reflect the needs of all the road uh, users. And that's why we are working uh, so much as you saw in my second slide in a number of countries starting from Senegal but also Morocco, Mauritania but also in Central um, Asia to review and update uh, road design uh, standards exactly for that uh, for that reason. So there's tons of lives to be saved in that respect. You always have to think that an engineer at the end of the day for how uh, many political commitments the minister has done he would always build according to the design standard and to the manuals. And so we need to make sure that, yes, of course, there's political commitment at the highest level, resources are there, but they also that the manuals that end up then being implemented by engineers on the ground really reflect properly road safety um, requirements. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susanna. That's really good advice to remember that an engineer will always build according to design standards and manuals. Um, Dave, do you want to talk about the rapidly growing and increasing uh, urban populations and, and that is a challenge, how you overcome it? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, so I'm going to talk just about two components of this, but of course, there's no part of the world that has a greater number of citizens living in cities than does Asia. Um, and many of those cities are growing very rapidly. And in fact, what we're finding is the motorization is, is growing even faster than the populations. Um, so first point, um, vulnerable road users um, in many of these locations make up the majority of trauma. So death and injury of motorcyclists, pedestrians, uh, and cyclists um, for, for many of these locations is the dominant problem they have. And that largely occurs in cities. So focusing on cities actually becomes um, a key area for us to improve. Thankfully, they're relatively contained locations, but that doesn't necessarily make it easy because there's not much space. Um, the second point, however, with respect to that, is that many of our developing member countries have poorly developed road management practices and institutions and governance. What the tools of IRAP do is that they introduce very good quality practices for institutions. It helps us to improve stakeholder engagement, to improve, improve evidence-based decision-making, to engage the economic perspective of decision-making, and, of course, they get reliable results. So these are precisely the performance measures that we need to address the, this real complex of, of safety, of social, of economic and environmental challenges that are facing our cities. So by lifting road safety performance through capacity improvement, we're actually lifting a wider set of boats in that same stream. Thanks, Natalie. Thanks so much, Dave. And you know, you mentioned that motorization is growing even faster than populations, and I think that's the key reason, right, that we need to scale up this great work.